Welcome back to another video in the digital forensic series. Um, in this particular video, we will take a look at um, a tool called EXIF tool. Now, you might be wondering what this is or what kind of analysis we're going to perform today. And we are going to perform a forensic analysis on photo images. So say, for example, I'll explain the theory beforehand and um, let's say for for a case study and you have you have certain files which you think could be potential images and then you know you somehow conclude and you come to a um, you come to a method where you can recover these images and now you want to see where these images were taken or see metadata about these particular images and the way that we can see metadata is using EXIF tool and this tool is very powerful because it actually gives you very in-depth information and without without me trying to explain everything let's just let's just use it and see um see what it can show us so first we need to install EXIF tool so we're gonna just open up a terminal and we're gonna elevate it at git install and you want to type in libimage dash exif tool dash pearl and type in the password and if it asks you for a prompt you'd have to say yes and then it'll continue to install the program and it's successfully installed after it shows you a input prompt again so we're going to clear that and the way that you run exif tool is you just type in exif tool and then you type in the image name so first i'm going to navigate to the directory where i have these images now these four images are from two separate phones they're from my phone and my girlfriend's phone and i'm using a samsung galaxy s7 edge and she's using an iphone 7 and what i'm gonna i've just renamed these one two three four just for ease um and i'll show you what this tool can actually give you the information what kind of metadata information it gives you and you'll be quite surprised in how much information it can give so and this information will help aid in digital forensics so let's just let's get on to it i guess um so now oh we knew a change so we're right now in this particular folder and we're going to run exif tool against jpeg1 And notice that it gives you quite a bit of information so let's gonna open up text editor and let's use this to take some notes so this is the analysis um, one dot jpeg and so the information you knew about this particular image before I gave it to you, uh, before I performed the analysis with the EXIF tool was that I had used a phone, I had used a Samsung Galaxy S7. My girlfriend's phone was the iPhone 7. And I used, I took a photo of the same exact location in the city where I am in, of the front camera, then the back camera, then the front facing camera again, then the back camera of two separate phones. And now I want to see if I can take that information out just by using this particular tool. So we've passed file number one on, oh, sorry, EXIF tool on file number one. And you can see when it was taken, it was taken yesterday. Also, oh, sorry, this is a modification time. So where's the creation time? Hmm. It's a little bit weird. It's saying that I've taken it today, but I've actually taken this picture yesterday. So today is the... Oh no, yeah, it is. I was reading it incorrectly. Sorry. So today's the fourth. Yesterday was the third. Um, I was reading the date 
timestamp incorrectly. So it does show you it was taken yesterday. It was taken at 422, which is absolutely correct. And let's see if so if picture number one is taken off the Samsung. And like I said before, I took it off a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. If we copy this particular model number, and let's uh, let's just do a, a Firefox search. So, and let's see what phone it comes up with. Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, full specifications of that particular device. So when it comes to, and this is actually my device right now, right now that I was using. So this would have been the model number of my device and it is in fact taken with no flash um, I want to see if it gives you the front or the back facing camera differentiation um, so no it doesn't give you that one on this particular image uh, but it does even give you the GPS coordinates. So say for example, if we were to go to a, another website to find GPS coordinates and we enter the longitude and latitude. I don't mind it allowing location, that's completely fine. So that's where I am right now. And we want to take, where's the, okay, GPS longitude. Let's see what it's actually asking us first. So 41 degrees, so 13. 41.13 and then longitude is 174.52 and the GPS thirty-five zero zero six zero zero east south and we want to go get address and if we zoom in to that address and i'm gonna it says hot river trail that's where the gps location is found but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna zoom in a little bit more because <clears throat> Excuse me. I was on the Esplanade driving southbound. And if you look at the photo itself, there's a photo. We can see that I'm on the, uh, this is zoom image, 69, the Esplanade. And yes, I was in fact maybe at 70, where did it say it was? I was maybe at 71, 73, but I took a photo of this in this angle. So my car was there and I took a photo directly there. So now all the photos are exactly the same. So I won't check the GPS longitude and latitudes for every single one, but just so you guys have a rough idea of what how powerful this tool is and how much metadata a photo can retain. Um, let's see if we can extract some more information. Uh, flash user. And you can see by this particular photo here. So this photo says 9.1 megapixels. So um, it doesn't actually give you the front or the rear facing camera, but this particular uh, information is, if you think about it, it is critical because it says 9.1 megapixel on that particular photo. So now if we go back to that model that we looked up 
And if we go look at which of the, if the front facing camera or the rear facing camera is somewhere around there, we can kind of pinpoint it down. So if you look at the main camera resolution, it's 12 megapixel. So the front camera cannot go past five. So it has to be this and some sort of settings could have been changed to say, for example, a, um, a wide screenshot or instead of like a normal four by two, uh, you know, the normal photo frame shots as opposed to the 16 by nine resolution. And because I do know if you put your phone in 16 by nine, it doesn't actually take it in the full megapixel, the maximum megapixel capacity of your particular device. It has to be like the default camera photo size. I think it's a four by five grid, but um, yeah. So because the photo is a nine megapixel, I'm gonna say that that was my front facing camera. And by looking at the quality of the first picture as opposed to the second picture, you can see that it's definitely degraded. Sorry, excuse that sound in the background. That's my heater turning off. Um, you can see that the picture quality is definitely degraded. So the first picture was in fact my front facing, my proper, sorry, back, the rear camera, the main camera of the phone. And let's have a look at, maybe I shook my phone. We can, we can definitely see that as well as it's really blurry. But we'll pause the second file and let's see if the pixels, the megapixel reading on that particular image shows any, any differently. So makes of two, one, two. First, I'm going to clear it so we don't get um, any confusion. So let's pause exit tool. So actually, I'm quickly going to get that information. Samsung model megapixel so that's the exif tool analysis for image number one Let's look at image number two. So to exif tool, um, image number two analysis, and we'll do the same thing over here. So you can see that it was, there's a file creation date create date is the exact same as the other one. I'm going to copy and paste that there as well. You can see that creation date for this particular file is the same. And let's look at the model and everything. So it is the Samsung again. Camera model name. So it's the exact same exact same model as the previous one. And now let's look at the coordinates. Coordinates would be definitely the same because we were in traffic at that time. So they may be slightly off, but no, they seem to be, oh, they're a little bit slightly off for that particular one there, but that's completely fine. So. Notice the image size now and the megapixels. The megapixels especially because this is what we what we need. This is our key to finding out if this is a front facing camera, or if this is the back facing camera. Uh, GPS. Cool. So this is a 3.8 megapixel 
image, which I'm thinking was taken with this particular front facing camera's resolution, because the maximum this can go is a five megapixel. So that's how we can differentiate just by using the maximum. Uh, it doesn't actually, uh, by the maximum uh, pixels for that particular image. And it doesn't actually say front or rear facing camera. In some images it does. If the phone retains that information on the metadata, it does. Though if the operating system allows it to retain that metadata, it does. And the EXIF tool can actually extract that information from that particular image. So now we've obviously identified that these two images are from a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Oh, whoops, why did I do that? It's by this particular website and we can say that website is a helpful website for the analysis of the first two files. So, and so let's continue on with the XF2 analysis for file number three and see what we find. So let's check XF2 for file number three. And you now know that I've, I've, I've told you at the very beginning of the video that two photos were taken from my phone, which was the Galaxy S7 Edge, and two photos were taken from the iPhone, uh, iPhone 7, which was my girlfriend's phone. So let's see if we can find that information. We know a little bit, so we know exactly what we're looking for. But um, it's very similar if you're using other photos. Like what I'll do is I'll try to get other photos and see if see if we can um use this tool I, or you can do that if you want since you now know how how the exif tool works and how powerful it can be in forensic analysis so let's use the image three orientation it even tells you the orientation so this phone was being held horizontally so when they've taken when they took this photo so that piece of information can be useful for you. Um, so the creation date, it's a creation date. So this particular file does not actually have a creation date. So this always doesn't retain the creation date for this particular image but I'm thinking file file modification date time because that is the closest time to to what I've actually taken the photo of so I would suggest using that because if you look at the time it's very close to what that is so it was 2019 703 at 16:22, and this was at 1634 which which explains itself because it was a few minutes after I've taken the photos and this was when I copied it this morning to get it onto this uh, virtual machine. We can see that it's a JPEG, uh, horizontal, let's see, so profile CMM type is Apple Computer Inc. So obviously this was taken on a Apple device and we'll continue going down. Um, it is display P3 profile ID. Hmm, it doesn't actually give more information than that, unfortunately. Um, profile file signature, not embedded. It doesn't give you the device model, unfortunately, for some reason. It says Apple Computer Inc. My phone had its screen replaced um, a while ago because it was a cracked screen and it's not a Apple certified screen. So maybe it's not showing up because it doesn't think the entire phone is an Apple device model so it couldn't generate. So similar to Windows when um, because of Windows 10 and Windows 7 I believe if you change certain parts it will ask you to enter the CD key again because it doesn't register that device as your initial device that you put the key in for. So maybe in that case that my girlfriend's iPhone 7 isn't showing up, but 
but I have no idea because in test environments that I've done in the past where I've analyzed photos, it actually shows you iPhone 6, iPhone 6S, iPhone 5 and stuff like that. So this is a very odd, but that is my only explanation because yeah, it had a screen replaced with an aftermarket screen and because that screen is a different screen to what the device model screen has, which is this, uh, iPhone 7, it's not showing up with any device model. Whereas the Galaxy S7 Edge has had nothing wrong with it in the past. But um, yeah, I guess that's, that's one of the things. But it does say Apple Computer Inc. It's got it all over and it shows you that it's a horizontal orientation. Maybe we can go by the pixels again. So let's see if Let's see if we can get the pixels, megapixel 1.2. So we know that this particular image pixels is 1.2. So let's take a look at, um, because we know that this is an iPhone 7, I'm going to kind of cheat and let's say iPhone 7 specs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where the, um, where the, those megapixels sit in an iPhone 7 and see if I can differentiate the camera. So what exactly is it comparing? So iPhone 7, 7 Plus, okay. So video recording, uh, FaceTime camera. So FaceTime cam, so the video recording There we go, camera. So 12 megapixel camera is the front facing camera, obviously, but where is the back camera? Hopefully they give us that information. Okay, so they don't do that, but it says seven megapixel camera. So I'm thinking FaceTime HD camera is the front facing camera, seven megapixel camera. And it says retina flash, so I'm presuming it would is that. That's when your screen turns really bright to emulate a flash. So uh, the front facing camera is seven megapixel. Um, I'm gonna quickly write those write that information down. Seven megapixel and the front facing camera we know where was it? Twelve megapixel, I believe. Twelve megapixels, so oh, sorry, the back facing camera equals twelve. Twelve megapixel. So now let's go back to the image and let's see if we can differentiate. So this was a one point two megapixel and I'm thinking we'll move on to the, but this was horizontal as you can see. So this could have been the back camera, but then I don't know why the image could be that low of a megapixel if it was the back camera, because why would you hold it horizontally if, maybe I held it horizontally, <laughs> maybe I can't remember. So what we'll do is we'll continue on with the analysis of file number four. So that way we can differentiate the data that we get. So this is file number of tool analysis for file four. So it was created then. We're going to use the modifying time as the date creation. It is a JPEG. Again, it's horizontal. Orientation is horizontal again. So maybe I did hold it, like I was saying before, horizontally for both instances. And this is XF24, 4.jpg. Uh, Apple Computing Profile Version Display Device RGB. It again doesn't give you the device model, unfortunately. Mm. So 
So this again is a 1.2 megapixel. So there's no differentiation, unfortunately, to this picture and this picture. I wonder why. To be honest, I think I made a mistake. I think I accidentally took a picture of using the same front and the same back camera. Sorry, I think I just took two. Oh no, but look at the clarity of this particular image at the bottom. And then this, where is it? Yeah, these two, three and four. Look at the image of my card dashboard. See how clear that is. And maybe that was due to me moving then so it was the front and the back but then for some reason it's not registering as a front or the back and it's giving the same megapixel count and 12809 okay 12809 12809 so at least now we know with the images such as these uh, where it was taken and information like this is crucial because when it comes down to digital forensics and forensic analysis information like this can help you identify what devices used in the crime scene what devices were was it edited with what devices so if a criminal had a specific device you can pinpoint it down to hey look this image was from this picture uh, this phone and it was taken at this time why would anyone else be there and you know you can all ask all these sorts of questions and you know help in the help in the case because with this with metadata it's there for every single file metadata is just data about data right so it's there for every single file to be accessed you just need to know how to access it and just by using a simple tool like the exif tool we managed to get information about the GPS location, which is insane because, I mean, you know, we think it's stuff like that is not recorded by default, but it is. And I didn't go into any change settings and change any of these settings in my phone. This is done by default. Um, this is done to help improve analytics and stats of the company's usage of the product and stuff like that. So when they, when they put this metadata option and these fields get filled when you're taking a photo and stuff, they definitely leave a trace. They leave a digital footprint, which we can utilize, which, you know, with tools we can utilize and access to find out more information about images. So I hope this particular tutorial helped and I hope you guys found interest in digital forensics and how powerful certain tools can be. So that was the EXIF tool. I'll leave a link in the description below of the installation steps and um, if you really want you know you can use any photos you don't have to like these were just photos that I took and I told you what phone I had already taken them off before we performed the analysis and 50% of the analysis was absolutely correct more than 50 like around maybe 60 to 70 percent because we ended up finding that these two images were from Apple devices and I told you how the screen had been replaced because of a crack and it was an aftermarket screen so maybe it wasn't registering that particular device as a S, uh, as a iPhone 7 anymore maybe Apple has that functionality and in built into their devices where it says hey look you're not on iPhone 7 because you've got an aftermarket screen now so yeah thing, things like that could be for legal reasons whereas for criminal and forensic situations it doesn't it didn't help us too much but it did simplify it for us to understand that hey look i had a iphone 7 oh sorry my girlfriend had an iphone 7 and the pictures were taken off those and you could make a conclusion from it um i've got some more photos here that i want to actually parse with the exif tool um see if we can analyze a bit more so So I've got four more images here. We'll quickly use that. So exif to analysis of image five now. And let's see.
doesn't want to stay. There you go. Cool. So So this, these were really old photos. So the four extra photos that I've got were really old photos, but I just want to see if, um, if, if I can extract information from when they were taken and if I can pinpoint the locations and stuff. So photo number four, oh sorry, photo number five was at our old previous house when two cows had come onto our property from a farm just nearby. That was a bit scary, as you can see. One there, one there. And I know the details of this photo. That's why I chose this photo. So that way, if there's anything wrong or incorrect, I can still kind of pinpoint. Obviously, in a legitimate forensics case, this, would, this wouldn't be the case. This would be much more difficult because you are trying to find out information from nothing. You may know the information of where the crime had, may have happened or anything like that, whereas I know exact information about this photo. But I have forgotten what device and whatnot it was taken on because it was a few years back. But we can still see if we can get that information through Exit Tool. So this particular file was on the 16th of 2017 of the 2nd. And it's a JPEG and it doesn't, it doesn't say much more information than that. This, mind you, these images, these additional four images have been passed through multiple hard drives, passed through multiple systems due to backup and recovery issues. So I don't know if they lose their metadata information, but if we'll just pause them and see what we can what we can extract. Um, doesn't say anything more than that. It says 1.2 megapixel. And I do remember back then I had a iPhone 5. So maybe it was that phone. But no, it doesn't give much more information than that, as we can, as you can see. So we'll copy the information that's crucial to us, and then see if we can put two and two together later on. So it doesn't even give you GPS coordinations, unfortunately, because this particular device may not have had the capability to retain GPS metadata. Whereas, you know, obviously the newer phones like Samsung and iPhones have that capability because you know people want to upload where they are people want to use their location where they are before they're uploading photos and stuff so the, all that all that metadata information is there by default so let's continue parsing of the files let's parse file number five oh sorry file number six So I'll show you the file number six first, the picture of it. This was at the same house where these cows were. And it was the same property, but it's of the pets eating. I don't know why the dog is on, on the tabletop while the cat's on the ground. It's just how it is. So let's look at that, see if that one gives any information. So we can see that this one does have a bit more information. We'll try to get it. We'll try to extract it. So creation date is the, is present so this one actually says it's an iPhone 5 so camera make model copy that and I remember like I said before I did have an iPhone 5 and to be really honest I took a wild guess I thought I had an iPhone 5 because I went through quite a few phones but obviously this next photo concludes that I did have an iPhone 5 so maybe that previous picture was from the same from the same um, same phone. It was a horizontal orientation, so we can see that we can derive from that information that it was the front facing, uh, sorry, the back facing camera. I keep getting those confused. The back facing camera to so the main camera. We'll go down and see if uh, see if there's any other other. See if there's any other information, and it says flash was auto, but it did not fire. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty specific information. Um, standard. Oh, there you go. It actually tells you. So it tells you the entire lens information. 
of this particular tool, uh, this particular device. iPhone 5 back camera. Gives you the image width and the height. Image size, 8 megapixel. And if we go back to the Apple website, if we go iPhone 5 Specs, what do I do? iPhone 5 Specs, and let's see if the back facing camera is in fact that particular um, megapixel range. So the iPhone 5, this is the 5, yes, this is the 5 tick specs. Camera 8 megapixel eyesight camera. This is exactly an 8 megapixel eyesight camera. And FaceTime camera is a 1.2 megapixel. But the back camera that we took a photo with is in fact 8 megapixel. Um, does it have a resolution? No, it doesn't have a resolution. So this is the A12, A1428. What model did we get? We ended up getting doesn't say the specific model maybe we missed it because it would have been numbers it just says like Apple iPhone 5 no it doesn't doesn't actually give you that specific date so it doesn't give you GPS no it doesn't have the GPS information either unfortunately <clears throat> excuse me yeah so that's all the information that there's very accurate information as you can see so maybe the screen having a replace the iPhone 7 my girlfriend's iPhone 7 having a screen replacement may have been a reason why it didn't register down as a legitimate iPhone or maybe iPhone 7s don't register that kind of information so weeks of tool analysis for image number seven now And these are all my personal images, so I can definitely say what the situation was or where it was, stuff like that. So image seven, this was when we won our victory. That was that was me there, that's my girlfriend, that was a teammate. And we had just won a indoor netball competition, social competition, and we'll search that. We'll see, and I know the location of that particular place as well, so we'll see if it shows you GPS and stuff like that. And see if we can derive the information. So this does not have much information. So date modified and date created as we know is now the same. So we can take the modification date as the creation date timestamp. Um, horizontal orientation is centered. Mm, unfortunately, it doesn't it doesn't show you what camera this could have been megapixel. Wow, apparently it was a 0 0.417. Yeah, this could sometime happen. I mean, say for example, if you, if you notice certain applications, like if you're using Viber or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, when you open those app, and then you open the camera through those apps it always has a degraded quality of photo maybe it could have been with that I don't know I'm not too sure but maybe maybe that the photo automatically got degraded to whatever that is uh, before it got sent because it would optimize it for that particular medium transfer to the to the receiving and the end client so maybe it did that before it sent it maybe someone was uploading this photo so we'll go on to photo number eight. This was at my sister's graduation. This was in Queenstown, down south in the South Island of New Zealand. Let's see if we can find a GPS to see if the coordinates match. Does it give you GPS? Hmm. Unfortunately, no, it doesn't. So it's all right, but we'll still, we'll still extract the information and see what we can find. So, exit tool analysis on image number eight. 
So does it have the date created? Yes, it does. And we can see that this is a Samsung digital camera. So could, I wonder if it was my, what would we have had? Samsung, I'm gonna copy this information, see what I can find and see if I can remember what I had. No, I, I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, we did have a, but I don't know if it was this camera. I thought it was that we had a Lumix. Yeah, I remember having a camera specific to Something, something along the lines of, um, yeah, some sort of Lumix camera, you know, not a Samsung camera, which was very s similar to that one, I guess. But what was the other search function? So we had searched that one. Let's search this one now. Yeah, no, we definitely had this one. It was this particular one. I thought it was a Lumix one, but it was obviously Samsung one. We had that Samsung. We got it off a deal off a nearby local store. Yeah, so that camera is definitely accurate. And you can see that... What else information? It said auto flash, did not fire. The reason why this information could be crucial is because sometimes images seem to be of different color, different shades, different angles. So knowing if the flash fire did not fire may be crucial to your crime scene. Um, just remember any piece of information that you can link back, say for example, a shadow of an object by not natural light can mean that a camera flash went off. So that is technically still forensic information, meaning that the camera was there and the flash was there, even though that natural light wasn't. Mm, yeah, that's all our information I can retain from these four photos. So yeah, I'll leave you guys to it at that. Hopefully um, you can use this and you understood how to use the tool so far. Thank you for watching. <laughs>